welcome. This is NTA Tuesday Live and I'm Cyril Stober. Now last week we took an in-depth look at access to credit facilities for micro, small and medium enterprises. Our discussion centered on the various ways the current administration has developed windows for seamless access to credit, increased support to small businesses, and uh, the provision of capital for prospective traders to operate in the nation's commercial environment. And with the response of numerous small businesses and individuals, we've decided to bring you a second part of the program on access to credit. Tonight, we will expand our discussion on the huge investments in agriculture financing, refinancing, discounted lending, and other schemes which are targeted at the growing enterprises and entrepreneurs, especially women and youths. And all of this in an effort to lift Nigerians out of poverty, provide gainful employment, boost GDP, and generally improve the citizens' quality of life. Now that's the outlook tonight, but first, this report by Benny Adams. The program is building on the successes recorded in the implementation of the other tracks of the scheme and in line with the plan to fully rejuvenate the economy with focus on MSMEs in the manufacturing sector. Chairman of the steering committee of the scheme, Mariam Katagum, says the federal government is rolling out the last component of the survival fund known as the Guaranteed Offtake Scheme. It is an intervention to assist small and growing businesses affected by the pandemic. These include face masks, hand sanitizers, liquid soaps, disinfectants and processed foods such as gari, palm oil, groundnut oil and so on. Under the payroll support scheme, 459,334 individuals benefited across 36 states and the FCT out of which 43% are female-owned businesses and 3% people with special needs. While the artisan and transport scheme, with an initial target of 333,000 artisans and transport beneficiaries, have 293,336 successful beneficiaries across 36 states and the FCT. Others are the CAC formalization support scheme with 244,162 small and growing enterprises registered for free, in addition to the general MSME's grant scheme with 82,491 beneficiaries to date. We have successfully dispersed 56,842,780,000 to 1,000,000 and 79,323 uh, beneficiaries. The letter scheme is given preference to products produced in sufficient volumes in each state which has proven propensity to create jobs and have a multiplier effect on the surrounding economy. All right, um, that report sets the tone for tonight's discussion. Let's start off by uh, introducing our guests to you. We would like to welcome to this program Mr. Abubakar Abdullahi Kuri. He is uh, the Managing Director, CEO of Nersal Microfinance Bank. Thanks for being with us here it's tonight. It's my pleasure this evening. Yeah. Let me also introduce tonight, mm -hmm. joining us again, Abubakar Nuhu Fipo. He is the Director General of the National Directorate of Employment, NDE. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you, Cyril. Right. I welcome viewers. Okay. Also here tonight is uh, Mohammed Ali Baba, he's a retired director of the Central Bank of Nigeria and uh, currently is a CEO, Amfani Development Consultant, Agri Business and uh, Financial Inclusion Facilitators. He's also a special assistant to uh, the Rifen President. Thanks for being with us tonight. My pleasure. And uh, we also have tonight Kabir Ibrahim, he is the national president of the All Farmers Association of Nigeria. He joins us via Zoom from Katsina. Good to see you tonight. Thank you, Cyril. Good to see you. Let me also welcome to this program someone who has been a beneficiary of these uh, initiatives of government. Uh, Abimbola Kafilat Ayeni, the CEO 
of uh, Bimkaf Palace Nigeria Limited. Uh, hello, thanks for joining us tonight. Much good evening, everybody. We'll probably be asking you to tell us about your experience much later in the program, but it's good to have you join us on the program. Thank you. All right, so um, we have our guests all seated. Well, just a, a quick note here that um, last week when we did the first part of access to credit facilities, we wanted uh, a key player in this whole initiative to join us. That's uh, the Bank of Industry. They turned down that request. Um, uh, the later indicated uh, interest to come on this program uh, a second time. We extended that invitation for this week. And uh, unfortunately, they're not joining us here tonight. So um, we'll just uh, go into the issues with, I guess, who have uh, responded to this invitation, all in a bid to explain to the numerous Nigerians who have uh, either benefited from the schemes of government or who are looking to be beneficiaries. And let's easily start with the MD of Nassau Microfinance Bank. And uh, situate what you have done so far in this whole issue of access to credit for uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises. Thank you, Sirius. Um, I think we have done a lot because of uh, SME is the engine growth of the economy. And uh, most conventional banks don't do what we do. So that's why my institution is set up to bridge the gap in SME financing. I will start with the most popular one, mm -hmm. uh, which is what I refer to as uh, COVID or TCF. Yeah. Uh, we have done over 320 billion to over 600,000 beneficiaries. Uh, if you go down the lane too, for the Agmis loan, which is otherwise called agribusiness, uh, small and medium enterprise, uh, we have done 104 billion to about 28,000 beneficiaries. For the uncle borrowers, whereby small farmers are linked with processors or large-scale uh, uptakers, uh, we have done up to 100 farmers with over 40 billion. And uh, recently, we have what we call a youth investment scheme that was introduced. Uh, it's supposed to be for the youth between the ages of 18 to 35. Uh, it's an investment on youth to mitigate the effect of all this Yahoo banditry, kidnapping, and so on, so that you can get self-employment and be self-sufficient. We have done over 5,000. Uh, it's just starting with about uh, 2 billion. So with time, we get traction around that. Uh, recently, too, uh, with the support of CBN governor, we introduced what we call now interest banking. It's meant for those who don't want to do interest-bearing loans because they are financially excluded in that area. So the idea is to bring the you non-interest know, banking to cater for those communities that don't want to do interest bearing. So currently that loan is on and we have started disbursement. We have done our 5,000 as at uh, last week. It started just last week, incidentally. Mm -hmm. We've done 5,000 for, for the sum of almost 1.2 billion. So we're going to get traction in those products. And um, let me state that there are SME loans. So I enjoy Nigerians to come forward, those who are qualified to assess mm -hmm. the law. Otherwise, those who are not qualified will apply and they may get now, it. That's the, that's, the, uh, that's the, in fact, the starting point. The yeah. big issue here is, now these facilities are available, but first, who gets uh, to be called uh, qualified or not qualified? Yeah, you yeah. The, the simple thing is, these loans are made to assess and abet affordable. They are made to assess by affordable. So, larger proportion of Nigerians who apply are qualified. For instance, right. the unique identity is required, which is BVN. Okay. Beyond the BVN, you must not have, have a credit failure in any bank. Not that you took loan, you didn't pay back. They're also called. The idea is to make it less uh, stringent. Okay. So that and people how can small it. a business does a you know, prospective beneficiary need to have before he can access any of these uh, no, facilities? No, basically, what well, you need to have, you have, have a business, have a business experience. And it has different categories. Yeah. For instance, if you take off the target credit facility, other referred to as COVID. Yes. Uh, if you, you have to have a, a company, presumably, and then you take up to certain limit, let's say 750. If you are just household, it's 500. So the idea is to allow accessibility. Because conventional banks don't give that type of loan. Okay. And there's a huge gap in the SME financing. 
All right, we'll come yeah. to um, other matters yeah. as uh, how easy it is to apply for these loans yeah. and how people can access them because um, we've had in the last two programs we did people calling in to say it's extremely difficult to reach. So we'll talk about <laughs> that, but let's go to the DG okay. of ND. Uh, well, this is one body that from its name, it is... Uh, you know, explanatory, what role it should be, and how have you carried out this role? Thank you, Cyril. Uh, before the advent of microfinance banks, before the advent of any financial lending organization, the NDE was established to combat mass unemployment wholesomely. Mm. By wholesomely, we mean it impacts skills, it counsels, it guides the unemployed persons to be able to determine the potential in individual unemployed Nigerians and afterwards impact skills into such persons with the aim of becoming self-reliant. And at that time, the NDE was at liberty. It could impact skills, and it, and it can also grant a credit facility. But with the, with the advent of time, hmm. when uh, microfinance bank and other financial institutions began to come by, and then lend financial support. The NDE now relaxes. And of course, due to some constraint in the provision of funds. So the NDE now plays down on granting of loans and majorly concentrates on impacting skills on the unemployed Nigerians for the purposes of uh, you know, them going to to establish businesses of their own and becoming bosses and employers of labor. Right. One of the key challenges of uh, most people who want to either start up or, you know, enhance their businesses is the question of not having requisite skills. Um, if you were to look at the, uh, uh, the services you have provided in this direction, how would you score what has happened so far? So far, so good. Uh, we have always tried to look back that the unemployment crisis today is as a result of accumulation of so many factors. And therefore, the impact of what the NDA alone is doing can hardly be seen. Hmm which is why the NDE now operates an open door policy and also establishes a window of collaboration. Now, this window of collaboration is not restricted to government agencies alone. After impacting skills, we mentor these beneficiaries and then link them up with financial institutions for them to be able to access uh, loan facility to establish businesses of their own. Uh, the, the person from NISAL will testify to the fact that the NDE and NISAL have been working together in order to bridge that gap of, you, you know, uh, pros uh, prospective uh, 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 business entrepreneurs uh, not getting the requisite fund for them to do what they want to do. Okay. Uh, yes, to that extent we do. All right, um, uh, we'll return to many of the issues that are coming up. But let's uh, let's go over to uh, uh, Mohammed Ali Baba, um, who, you know, we are going to put just the same issues uh, before him and say, well, the whole concept of trying to lift uh, a huge number of Nigerians out of poverty has led to the setting up of these schemes. Now. You were in the Central Bank of Nigeria, and uh, today you are also uh, described as um, uh, financial inclusion facilitators. 
How deep is this challenge that we're facing in accessing credit for small, I mean, uh, micro and uh, small enterprises? Uh, truly, it's uh, deep because, I mean, uh, some of these schemes uh, are coming uh, almost about now. But these challenges have, uh, have persisted, you know, for, for, for a while. And so, uh, mostly, a lot of people, they have innate skills. They have acquired these skills. And as we know, well, one of the major instruments of translating skills to activities and then to products actually is finance. And uh, before now, just like uh, my uh, earlier speakers have highlighted, the conventional banks who, which dominate the financial uh, landscape shy away from this uh, uh, largely impactful SMEs, micro, small, and medium enterprises. And so they have been left uh, uh, on their own, uh, by, to their own designs for so long that when this uh, new opportunity came up, there has been an avalanche of uh, applications. And that's why, you know, some of, uh, I mean, they, they seem maybe uh, the impact seems uh, so, so little because the hunger has been there has been enormous. But uh, by, and, by and large, with the coming of these uh, uh, opportunities, I mean, a lot of them have actually been impacted. And uh, even before now, like the CBN, apart from this new scheme, CBN has what is called micro, small, and medium enterprise, uh, uh, dev I mean, development fund. And that fund, before the advent of uh, NASA Microfinance Bank, has been largely rooted through some of those uh, commercial banks, there, were, there have been a few of them that have ventured there. And of course, BOI has also been doing a, a, a lot in that direction. We also have the De Development uh, Bank of Nigeria, which also focuses on SMEs. So a lot of these uh, institutions have been focusing and gradually they have been impacting actually because the volume here they have mentioned, uh, for, for instance, the COVID, uh, which has been most popular, over 300 billion has gone into the system now, and also the AXMIS. And of course, uh, particularly what's most encouraging with this uh, new scheme is the, the ease which reach the ease of access, because the conventional institutions have always have, you know, so much hurdles that some don't even bother trying. Now with uh, very relaxed and uh, you know easy to access uh, opportunities, you know like uh, being provided, a lot of them have been benefiting. All that we require is that uh, I mean, for instance, national microfinance. Now the plan is for them to be across 774 uh, local governments. So they need uh, additional support to actually spread this uh, their tentacles wide and you know far, so that uh, a lot of uh, this our very I mean hardworking and yearning beneficiaries who, 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 who join in. A lot of these are social upheavals are traceable to unemployment, but with the coming of these institutions, once they can go far and wide, and with adequate funding too, because particularly the source of funding, the, the AXME scheme is for now limited. Part of our call is for the CBN itself, and then of course the federal government to actually find a way of uh, fund, uh, you know, you know, tunneling more funds into these schemes. Because, like I said, the ease with which, the ease of access actually, actually been mostly very impactful. That's what is most impressive in this. So more, more funding, I think, is required and support so that they can spread, you know, wider and then more and more of this, our yearning Nigerians could access them. There certainly will be need for more. But let's uh, go over to the president of the... Uh, All Farmers Association of Nigeria, Kabir Ibrahim. What do you make of uh, these efforts by uh, the government to create this atmosphere and enhance access uh, to credit for, you know, people and enterprises that have been described as the engine of growth? We welcome development. And uh, like Oliver Twist, we, the farmers always ask for more. You know, our numbers are very high. Uh, the last speaker mentioned that uh, there is need for more funding so that uh, these things will reach many, many more people. The only efforts are, you know, targeted to maybe 1 million, 2 million farmers in Nigeria. We boast that we are like 40 million. 
and uh, largely we are small holder farmers. And uh, we are encouraging people to do agriculture as a business. And therefore, they need financing to produce optimally and be able to really uh, do other things other than just uh, feeding themselves. And that is the key. You know, people should be able to do other things with what they make from agriculture. And to do that, it must be a business. And for it to be a successful business, it needs credit, it needs financing. And so we welcome these developments. We hope that uh, there will be, uh, you know, there will be synergy between all of them because there are so many windows and uh, everybody seems to be doing their own thing. But if these are put together in one uh, basket and they reach more people, we will be happier. And, uh, uh, you know, the food system will improve and we will definitely attain food security in Nigeria if you uh, from the smallholder farmers well. Because uh, whether we like it or not, these are the engine room of food. They produce food for all Nigerians. The large-scale farmers are not necessarily, you know, they, you know doing what uh, the smaller farmers are doing. Because the small farmer, when he uh, produces, he sells to the people who will eat. The large-scale farmer sometimes holds and sells to the largest, uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the biggest uh, bidder, the largest bidder. But the smallholder farmer sells off to marry off his daughter or to help his son to get married or to he himself get married. So it's more readily available. What they produce is more readily available. And therefore, we should put in more money, you know, more credit to these people. And that's what we are asking the, and everybody else to do. The microfinance banking has come to help us. And uh, I think uh, the more the merrier. If they expand their basis to every tentacle in Nigeria, we are present also in the 774 local governments of Nigeria. And we are almost 40 million. So we need a lot more money in that uh, direction. And we, we need openness, we need the easier access. And uh, you know, when we do these things online, most of our people are not educated. So it is better when the thing is close to them and they just walk in and talk to the people who will guide them to get it. A lot of these things that were put online last year, so many of the smallholder farmers didn't even know how to get go around it. And of course, some of them failed in their efforts. Some could not even apply. But I, I believe in time to come, we will be able to, to make it more seamless. And uh, we look forward to that. And we like to cooperate with everybody who is, uh, you know, a player in the agriculture space. We, we made advocacies towards uh, the microfinance bank. The MD probably did not see my text. I sent him a message that uh, as Afan, we want to partner with them. I know he's a very busy man. His office is always a beehive of activities, like people looking for this. <laughs> okay. But uh, I believe this meeting is very good as is germane for the food system. Kabir, not, not to worry about that. He's right here and he's heard that. So even if the text had not been delivered, he's heard it direct <laughs> from you. And so um, you can get to talk about that after this program, courtesy of NTA, of course. Um, but now let's talk to someone who has been a part of this process by way of uh, accessing one of the schemes and taking advantage of one of the schemes of government. And uh, here, let's introduce uh, Abimbala Kafilat Ayeni, uh, the CEO of BIMCAF Palace Nigeria Limited. Now, explain to us which of the schemes you keyed into and how did it go for you and BIMCAF? Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone, once again. It, we, we've actually been both beneficiaries. We've benefited from the AgMIFs and we've benefited from the COVID-19 as BIMCAF. And I must confess, it's, it's been, it, it was, it's a great opportunity to be part of the first beneficiary for AgMIFs. And sincerely, I won't say it's um, easy as a business owner, but what I would say is for BIMCAF as a company, because we are an agro-food processing company, we produce spice, oil, and flour, 
and we also use our place our facility to train other entrepreneurs and encourage them to use our facility for NAVDAC registration and sincerely I must confess to you that amount of money came at the right time to be able to acquire some certain equipment we need to upgrade to be able to achieve what we want and accommodate more entrepreneurs so from acquiring the loan to be able to get equipment with it to standardization it has not been easy i'm not saying that's the exact amount we need but i'm just saying it came in and at least save us a whole lot every fund that have come into the business has been channeled into expansion and I, like I used to tell people, it's not magic. You have to be willing, you have to have the zeal, you have to have the passion to want to do this business before you can say you want to get bank a loan and you invest in your business, it's not easy. And you have to make sure you're committed to, make, committed to doing the business in as much as we know there are a lot of hindrances stopping us from achieving this goal as an entrepreneur. But the truth about it is that from getting it, to actually to to getting all the equipment we need and everything we've been doing it's been i would say not by any channel but by grace of god because there wasn't any connection that was helping us to do anything i want to believe it is because we were up to that standard i want to believe we went through some certain type of training like because i know to acquire that loan you need to have certain credibility certain credibility to some level like he said you must not be owing a bank and have, um, I think, your, credit, your credibility will speak for you. And apart from that, your, your, your existence revolving around your business, not trying to run a business that you don't have a future for, and a business that actually have a focused business plan. I think that's what led us to getting the facility. And for the COVID-19, it was a gambling we did during COVID, sincerely, because we were in production, because we are in food processing. And because we're in production, we tried to say, okay, fine. There wasn't access to raw material as such, and things were becoming expensive. So I tried it straight hand. I was surprised. And I was shocked when I was shortlisted. The day I was shortlisted, I woke up from my bed. I saw the SMS. And I said, okay, they said, if you agree, click yes. Surprisingly, I clicked yes. The next question was my BVN number, an account of choice. When I put the account of choice, I went, got to the factory. When I got the alert, I, I just started screaming. I just, I was wondering, and it was just like that. But it's not all like that for all SMEs, I must confess to you, sir. The MD, NYSA Microfinance, I must confess to you, sir. It's not been easy like that for all entrepreneurs because it's not everybody that has gotten this knowledge. Not everybody has access to this internet. Not everybody has access to this information. But as much as I know you are trying and you've leveraged a lot with, as these people have been able to benefit, but I still, no, they were entrepreneurs who have not benefited entirely. And I must confess, it is a laudable program. I must tell you the truth. It's very, very laudable. In as much as it's not easy paying back, because we know ease of doing business in Nigeria is not all about money alone, sir. Well, you know, you answered the question just before I was going to ask it. And, um, you, yeah, but again, we can all, always re-emphasize that aspect of it. Yes, not, not, not everyone goes through, not, not everyone has access to um, the internet, not everyone has knowledge. But beyond all that, you know, we have so many people who are skeptics. I can't believe this. Um, you mean really you didn't have to know someone who knew someone and who had someone and had one other relationship somewhere? So yeah, I don't have a relation in, um, in um, what's it called, um, CBN, and I don't know anybody in NYSA. I, I don't. From the first time I filled the form to all the interviews to the first day of the first trench debasement, I don't know anybody. I don't. It's just, the, I will just tell you the truth. I think your brand, your product, your business idea should speak for yourself. The push you give whatever you do speaks for you because I was all out for it. I wasn't willing to stop at any point. In short, I had this no giving up spirit. Even when people would tell me it will not happen. I've had people who told me when I was a beneficiary, I sent SMS to people that I've gotten this thing, do it. Everybody just say, mm, Paul, you don't start nothing. You won't get this money. People were just against me. I had to be showing my SMS to people 
like, I really got this money, trust me. It's just that it's paid into the account that is being needed. Those equipment, where I needed equipment, not directly to me. I'm seeing it in my NISAL account, I cannot touch. Like I describe it to people, it's like a corn in a glass for a fowl. You are seeing the corn, pecking the glass, but you cannot eat it. Because it's not meant for you, it's actually meant for a certain project. And it was channeled through that way. And I must confess to you, there wasn't anybody. It, it's, I, it, I feel as if people need to believe this and know you don't need to actually send your uh, letters through somebody to get to someone to get to it. Just follow through the channel. Make sure the channel of what you're focusing on in your business is actually what you dream of and stay put to it. Follow every due process. Submit unnecessary documents. Sometimes you might feel form, it might fail. But your non-follow-up, she's not following up your document properly, may actually make you not know that you are actually hanging. Because recently it happened to some certain entrepreneurs, we didn't even know some certain forms, the field was just hanging. They thought it was just pulled through. It was me that told them, if it is still on this same level, that means it has not pulled through. Because there are a lot of funds going around, and people don't even know it's happening because they just believe it is government thing. They will give it to people who they know. I'm not. I'm not in any position. And in this is uh, this is freebie for everyone who wants to access it. But uh, more importantly, you raised uh, you raised something here. Yes, you went through the process, but uh, you've also acknowledged that um, there's so many out there who still want to get through and they can't. And that's the question we'll put to the uh, MD here with us. Um, why is it so difficult? Um, yes, you can mention that people need to have a business plan, they have to have a company, they have knowledge. I can also say that there are so many who, you know, have satisfied that criteria, but they still can't get access. What are the challenges here? I think the major challenge is the financing gap. Uh, you know that the, the it's like there's a huge gap already before NASA came into play. Banks are not granted such type of credit. Nigeria has a population of over 200 million. SME alone, from the last statistics, it's over 40 million. So you can see that NASA alone cannot close the gap. Let me give you an instance uh, for the target credit facility that is very popular. I have over 9 million people looking for that loan. And I have to close the portal because more and more people are applying and the funding cannot match the demand. Mm. So we have to close the portal and say, okay, let's begin to clear the backlog. So it's supposed to be a collaborative effort, not only about NASA. There's a collaboration both on the federal government, state governments, and NASA. Because what NASA is doing now is actually an initiative of Central Bank. So the federal government should also come in to close the gap, state government should come. NGOs should come, even foreign funds should come and close the gap. There's a huge gap already because banks, traditionally banks don't grant such type of loans. Conventional banks don't grant it. So the few institutions that are granted are overwhelmed by the numbers. If I'm talking of ag business, I have over 300,000 people looking for the loan. The last statistic I took, if I need to get one to clear the ag miss backlog, I'll be looking for about 20% of the Nigerian budget. It is practically impossible. Why am I going to source the funds from CBA or from private after tax or banks? So all the institutions around providing the funding, both the bankers committee and central, I think they have played their part and they are getting overwhelmed. So there is need for complementary activities in that sector from state governments. I know federal government is doing some work there, but state governments are domiciled. Uh, NGOs are also not playing a bigger role. Even we need to have foreign donors coming in to play in that sector. Because the, 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 the gap in that sector is huge. If you look at statistics now, all the loans that have been granted, how do we even find maybe 1% of the loans to that uh, SME sector? 99% of Nigerian loans go to big tickets from conventional banks. They don't look at ordinary person because there are no commercial gains there. If you give ordinary person money, loan, there is every tendency that loan will not come back. It will impact on their profitability. And those banks are set about to make money for shareholders, for the board, and so that people can get it on investment. So other than that, they are need to buy, have incentive for those banks to begin to give loans to the private sector. Yes, she can say we have that. I like her comments. I mean, well, thank you for the kind uh, feedback. Uh, the way we operate is that we 
people apply via the portal. You don't need to know me because how will I do those numbers if you have to know me? <laughs> and beyond that, we also ensure geographical spread. So don't feel that, okay, because Lego has highest number of SMEs, they should take all the loss. No. We do it according to geographical region, also consider recognizing population as right. a factor. Those regions or states that have higher population, of course, may have slightly higher numbers. But those who don't have should be patient. The real challenge is around funding. And uh, that's why I'm calling on other players to have a kind of uh, leverage so that we we'll come together, not only NMB or NASA, but all other players from the federal government, state government, NGOs, uh, international organizations should come de together to close the gap in the SME finance. All right. Let, let, at this point, let's, let's try to get another beneficiary, um, Anusike Valentine. Uh, He's a director of Mac Cheese and Sons Global. He joins us via Zoom from Kuji. Um, Anusike, uh, thanks for being with us. And just go straight and give us your experience, if you can hear me. OK, thank you, Uncle Cyril. Good evening, Nigerians. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, go ahead. OK, OK. Um, the OLO program, you know, it has been a great one to our company. In fact, when we applied for the credit facility, it was granted. All right. Uh, it does look as if uh, we're having some challenges uh, linking up with Anne Nusike, who's uh, uh, in Kuje, joining us via Zoom. Uh, we'll try and re-establish those links, and uh, because it's important for us to hear. Okay, yeah, right. You're back. Just, just go ahead from where you you, you left off. Okay. So as I was saying, the credit facility actually helped us to secure some uh, spaces for our products, and it also helped us to increase our market presence, penetrate some other um, areas which we were unable to cover, and also um, procure some machines. In fact, it has been a great one to both us and uh, everybody around us, you know. So we just want to thank the federal government for the loan. And we also encourage Nigerians to key into the program and to also be faithful when paying back the loan. The loan has been a great one. Adam CK, I'll still put the same question to you. Did you have to go through someone who knew someone in the establishment, or did you have to undertake some backhand stuff, behind the scenes maneuvers, uh, for you to access that loan? No, 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 no. We did not actually go through anyone. We just applied at their office, and to my greatest surprise, we were called upon. And when we were called to come to um, Smithan headquarters, they actually talked with us, and we gave them our, their, our assurance that everything is going to be paid back in due time. And as we speak, we've been able to pay back all. Okay. All right. Okay, so um, uh, we hope you can stay with us. Um, um, if you can, we will still return to you to uh, ask one or two other issues here. But uh, let's come to the uh, DG of NDE. Now, what? <laughs> I, I see that while all this was going on, you were... Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I wanted to, yes. to, to really mm -hmm. say one or two things mm -hmm. concerning what my, my colleague has said. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is true that uh, for applicants, not everyone who applies gets through because there are rules and there are regulations. That brings me to the point of why we are collaborating with NISA. Mm -hmm. The NDE impacts training and ensures that whoever has gone that training must have acquired some skill in a particular voc vocation. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is first. Then secondly, the NDE goes ahead to impact entrepreneurial skills into such person to give that person a business training to be able to write and come up with a bankable feasibility report so that at whatever place you tender that feasibility report it will be appraised and 
you could have an easy way to get the fund. So it is on that basis that we collaborate with, uh, with NISA. Yes, it's true, funding is always a constraint in most of the activities we do. But I see that federal government is also trying because CBN is government, the NDA is government, there are other uh, ministries, departments and agencies all out to ensure that they encourage farmers, they encourage unemployed Nigerians, they encourage uh, the poorest of the poor in order to uplift them out of poverty by ensuring that they engage themselves in an income generating activity. Now let, let's let's speak with um, Mohammed Ali Baba. Now, if you were to advise, um, it's clear now that um, because of the huge numbers who are looking out for, who are trying to access these facilities, um, uh, there's no way it can go around. Just like the uh, MD of Nassau uh, Microfinance Bank has said, what would you advise people who? I mean, the numbers won't stop. Everyone would still try to get out there and access these facilities. Um, I mean, so uh, it's tough to just tell someone and say, look, you know, just sit back because uh, there aren't enough funds. Uh, what do you advise? I think first my first advice would be, if, uh, I mean, to encourage state governments in particular, even local governments and their foundations, public spirited individuals can partner NASA. They can do a matching fund, you know, kind of arrangement because I mean, federal government, after all, the citizens of this country belong to states and local governments. So they also have to have a role because a lot of these initiatives and policies come from the federal government and most of these states do little or nothing. Particularly now, our major challenge is on, I mean, this insecurity, which has been largely traced to unemployment. Even the security votes that these governors spend regularly, part of it can be diverted into a matching fund to create uh, job opportunities for, for our youth. And then, of course, even at the local government levels. And then, of course, we have the NGOs and then public spirited individuals. A lot of these, even politicians, that have so much funds to dispense during elections, they can also create, you know, this kind of matching funds. And rather than uh, merely funding uh, political campaigns or th thoughts and whatever, they could dedicate this kind of funds. Because we need to actually be more creative around these issues. Because we all come to, have come to that painful conclusion that uh, virtually most of this restiveness, the violence and the, the, the brigandage are traceable to, to the idle hands that we have. And uh, largely, uh, our population is said to be youth-dominated. Uh, youth, uh, 60, 60, 65 percent of the Nigerian population are said to be youth. So they are agile, they are very, you know, you know healthy. And uh, so they, they need opportunities to, 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 to actually, you know, exhibit their, their, their skills and then distract them from, from, from this, uh, you know, restiveness. Uh, the governor, for, for instance, and it's a classic case that used to be told by the governor of KB, particularly when it comes to agri, was that there, there was a time he invited youths of the party into the government house for a meeting, and they, they sent back message that they were busy in the farm harvesting their crops. Ordinarily, before now, they, they, would, they would be anxious to, 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 in fact, more numbers than invited would have been at the government house, you know, being turned back at the gates. But they are the ones now telling the governor that when they were free, they could, they could come for that kind of a meeting. So I think a lot of our leaders, our elites, the politicians, and everyone needs to actually re have a rethink. Most of these funds, they dissipate endlessly, could be dedicated to, 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 to some kind of port that they could partner a lot of these uh, you know, institutions to, to increase the, the, the funding available for these activities. And the multiply effect, effect will be will be so, so, so obvious for all to, to, to see. A lot of this violence and restiveness will go down once our youths have gainful uh, access to, to, you know, to, to dis dispense their energies. That's part of my, my advice, truly. Well, while, while the government goes ahead to uh, put in place these schemes as to uh, grant easy access to uh, finances for small businesses uh, to grow, there are also other aspects, other things that the government is doing as well to uh, ensure that um, there's a better life for the citizens generally. And uh, one of them is the National Investment Program, 
which is aimed at uh, social inclusion and economic growth. This next report by Ruth Aguele takes a look at that. With a growing population of an estimated 200 million, the burden of ensuring a more equitable distribution of resources to vulnerable groups in the country is one the federal government took into consideration through the establishment of the national social investments programs to reduce hardship from the poor and vulnerable in the society. There are four components under the national social investments programs, namely and Power Scheme, Conditional Cash Transfer, Government Enterprise and Empowerment Program, and the National Homegrown School Feeding Program, which are all under the purview of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and Social Development. The Conditional Cash Transfer is targeted at the poor and vulnerable groups in the society, with a disbursement of 5,000 Naira as monthly stipends to beneficiaries. I will trade with the money to bring me some interest which will help take care of my family. I'm always in the hospital and this will help to treat my eye. God bless the provider and bless the money. Beneficiaries are drawn from the National Social Register across the 36 states and the FCT. What do you say to Mama? I enjoy the food. I eat rice and egg. And I add rice and lettuce and stew. One meal a day, more enrollment in schools. The National Homegrown School Feeding Program is targeted at primary school pupils with a specific focus on increasing enrollment in schools and reducing malnutrition, especially among the poor. The Government Enterprise and Empowerment Program, GIP, is a micro-lending intervention program that targets traders, artisans and farmers. Having three sub-programs, trader money, market money, and farmer money, with zero collateral loans as part of poverty eradication efforts. Where got my promise, not the feed. Yeah, it's true. It's benefiting me for my business, for everything, for my anything why right, they do. The Empower program was designed with a mandate to empower young Nigerians through capacity building, investment, and direct support with the commencement of Batch C which is already in progress. It thank God for this program, the sense that after the graduation in school, we were not able to practice what we've been taught in school. So thank God, when Empower came on board, I applied and I was given employment without knowing anybody. It was a very transparent platform. I'm an Empower volunteer under NAGRO. I've been a victim of joblessness for over four years, but Empower came in to put a smile on my face. As the federal government continues to initiate policies for socio-economic development, it is hoped that these initiatives will put the nation on a path of steady growth and development. In Abuja, Ruth Aguele. All right, that uh, takes care of the social aspect, but uh, while that is on, it's also uh, the movement to make sure that businesses are set up and uh, they have easy access to what will help them grow. And that's the subject of uh, this next report by Yahana Su Hassan Barao from Kanu. Kanu is naturally a home to able-bodied young persons struggling over the years to assert themselves as productive and proud members of the state. With multiple financing interventions by the federal government to help the youth pursue sustainable economic engagements, Kanu is believed to be on the forefront in driving maximum benefit from such schemes. For instance, the Uncle Borrowers program, which covered production of many crops like maize, wheat, rice, and cotton, has attracted many youth to venture into farming, with industries coming up ranging from small, medium, and large scales, providing job opportunities for the team in populace. You can see that farming is everything. If you can farm, I'm telling you, you will get more than what you want. The chain begins from the farm. Job creation begins. In the industry, continuation. In the market, continuation. I recall that Nigeria was spending over a billion naira daily to support rice bills importation 
But today we are not spending even one naira. This is a very great achievement to the country. Ibrahim Mohammed is among those that benefited from one of the federal government training and empowerment program on that the Nigerian Content and Monitoring Board. Being a graduate of computer science, he is now fully into GSM repairs with knowledge acquired and equipment given to him. He and his partners alike are not only out of joblessness, but employers of labor. Do something in our own, our home, in this place, other places, and you can train other people. We need to get them working. When they're busy, the issues of insecurity, banditry, kidnappings and so many other things will decrease to the barest minimum level. In addition, Kano at present has more than 100,000 poor and vulnerable households who receive 10,000 naira monthly stipend to uplift their livelihood. Harira Adu now owns a heart of goats and sheep courtesy of the support of the federal government. She is among the beneficiaries who now have better stories to tell just like this young NCE holder who is now into backyard poultry production as beneficiary of the Government Enterprise Empowerment Program. With the support received from the federal government, no doubt the lives of the lives of Harira and Ibrahim have changed from being in extreme poverty to actors in various sectors of the economy. All right, um, President All Farmers Association of Nigeria, you're right there in Katsina. I know you said, uh, like Oliver Twist, you're asking for more, but um, yeah, you had the MD of Nassau Bank and uh, you also had uh, the DG of uh, NDE. <laughs> it's extremely difficult to get the more you're asking for. So what do you do? What are, what are the creative uh, 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 suggestions that, uh, you know, they say think out of the box now? Well, uh, you see, uh, that's why I told you the farmer, the average farmer is now being told to do agriculture as a business. And we should not be ever ready to sell what we produce in its primary form. We should add value to what we produce so that we, we get that which other people are getting. You know, we are always getting farm gate price. And that is very, very poor. And you can see the skyrocketing uh, prices of food now being blamed on farmers. But certainly it's not farmers, it's the middlemen. The people who, who buy from us and sell off. So we, as we now think uh, towards value addition, we are improvising ways and means of making our lives better. And if we come together as cooperatives, we'll be able to help each other. We'll be our brothers and sisters keepers. And therefore, we will generate our own uh, ways of helping each other to attain that. But what I'm saying is that before that is done, we need the seed money. And the seed money will come from all these windows that uh, are open now. You know, if you look at the total investment from uh, CBN and many other windows, you find that uh, the effect is not felt much because... Cyril, I know you are complaining, or Madame is complaining when she goes to the market now, the prices of food uh, is so prohibitive. I am saying that if all this money was really given to the real farmers, the, there will be food available, and it will be at rock bottom price to everybody. So I enjoyed the DG of, I mean, the, the, the MD of NASA microfinance, to always seek to give farmers these loans through an organization like AFAN, because then you will give the farmers. If, however, you go directly or you just uh, look at people who prepare all kinds of things and come to you, you might end up not giving the people who will really feed the 200 million mouths that we have. They, they, they will do other things with the money. Food security or the, the dialogue on food on the food system, which is going to be launched globally on the 23rd, is talking about the global 
effect of COVID-19 and many other things that have happened to make the food system suffer globally. And so the attention to agriculture should be more holistic and we should have synergies between all the windows and we should be able to really target the people who are productive, not people who are imagined to be productive. This is, this is why we're asking for more. Because I can tell you that so many of the smallholder farmers have not benefited from any of these things. They are still just struggling. And you know, not, we don't produce everything. We produce the few things that we produce and we have to go to the market to buy other things. Therefore, whatever we produce, we will have to sell at a very high price to be able to afford the others. And uh, we have noticed one thing again in, the, in these windows. I don't know whether it's a, a microfinance bank has anything to do with it. There is this concept of, uh, they, they call them the prime uncles. The prime uncles, instead of giving the smallholder farmers money as to, to behave, I mean, to act like outgrowers for them, they now follow the markets. They buy the produce, and then since they have a big margin, they can buy it at any price. And that is why you don't have this price stabilization up to now. In about a month or so, most harvest will come in, and the food is supposed to be cheaper. But I don't know whether it will be this year. And we have advised government to now stock the strategic grains reserve in October and November, and to release what is there in February and March next year, so that you will have this effect. This is why the GMP was created, the Guaranteed Minimum Price so that you buy off food or grains from the farmer who wants to sell off to marry off his daughter or to help his son to get married and that kind of thing. But these people are producing at the barest minimum possible because they don't have credit, they don't have finance. When you target them and give them uh, a, a very uh, manageable interest rate, you know, from 1% to 3%, they will, they will surprise you. If you take uh, Kenya, for instance, in Kenya, I, food is not and a you've problem you've introduced anymore. there, um, talking about brokers, but um, we'll, we'll have time to look at that and ask our guests, our other guests, to comment on that if uh, they've, they've heard such uh, reports and um, suggest what can be done about it. But for now, we'll take a short break. When we return, hopefully the phone lines will be open and that means that um, other people, other Nigerians can get to join the conversation in the studio. They might have questions or comments they want to make about the issues at stake. And uh, we hope we'll get those calls through. Uh, our guests here uh, would uh, respond appropriately to such issues as they may raise. So stay with us on NTA Tuesday Live. We'll be back shortly. Nigerian youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Muhammad Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths, and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria, pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. Oriented Innovation Talk Show. Right, thanks for staying with us. Now, this is a segment where 
the phone lines will be open and you can get to be part of the discussion. But just a quick note uh, for those who are phoning in tonight, as we always say, when you get through, when your call gets through, when it's passed to the studio, do us a favor, turn down the volume of your TV set so we can avoid the hurlback or the echo. And do go straight to the point, ask your question or make a comment. Don't worry about the greetings. Um, just hello would do. Um, this is so others can get on the line. And of course, you do know that sometimes uh, the lines can be erratic. and uh, So you don't need to spend too much time and lose out the call. So this is that segment now. All right, um, before the calls come in, le let's quickly return to uh, Abimbola Kafilat Ayeni, the CEO of uh, uh, BIMCAF. And uh, this time, I'd just like to find out from you, how flexible was your repayment plan? How did you find it? Okay, thank you very much for that question. I've been willing and waiting for it. Flexibility, I would say because you're given one year moratorium, it's actually a good one. But ask me, has it been easy for a Nigerian entrepreneur to take loan and pay back easily? It's not easy. Because I will tell you, it's not just financing that is the problem for entrepreneur. I'm sorry. I need to chip in this. There are a whole lot of things that makes business easy. You can't, if you get a facility, if you get a loan and you're trying to build your business, there are still other serious hindrances that I wish we could actually come together as a body, both the loan, both the giver of the loan, the regulatory bodies to come together and see how business can work for entrepreneurs. I'm talking about knowing that it's not just money that is your problem when you have NAFDAQ certification to run after. I'm serious about this because, and when you cry, you get this money, you start this business, you're processing this particular NAFDAQ process. Before you know it, it takes three to four months, so called federal government says, but it takes nine to 12 months sometimes to get this particular number. And it gives me great concern as an entrepreneur because if, the, if you cry to them, they tell you it's not be easy for them because they are short-staffed, because they have a whole lot of reason. And this is a major problem for entrepreneurs. It might be easy sort of at the beginning for us to pay, but at, at, the, at a point we had injuries, we had issues that came up as a business owner that you cannot rule out in business. Because imagine you buying garlic for 18,000 per bag. I've been offered 10,000 Naira per bag from Sokoto before, and you're buying at 55,000 per bag now. It's so, that is, to show sure, the difference and the magnitude is great. And this is to all entrepreneurs that you actually have this little working capital that has been given to you after buying equipment. And you realize you want to process this raw material, you want to, 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 to finish product, to be able to sell within your country, sell in West Africa, sell in the whole of Africa, or even export out of the country. And you cannot assess it with the little working capital you have anymore. If you tell me, I will tell NISAL today to please even still give entrepreneurs opportunity because of what is going on around the raw material today, time to pay or have a one-on-one -on -one discourse with them. I've had people come to me tell me they want to get this loan, but the fear is if I get this loan, and as you're experiencing right now, I'm experiencing it, who comes as my savior? It's a good thing I will tell you that NISAL is not a bank that gives you that pressure you need to commit suicide for. That's the joy because I think I've had people who have come to me, they've seen the instances of what happened to us, and they've seen how we grow, they've seen our repayment plan, they've seen what happened, and they've seen how we step down a little bit, and they've seen how we're trying to pick up, which is not easy. But I'm just saying it to uh, Mr. Ciro this night, that our access to credit facility part three should not just be about NISAL NDE alone. There are other bodies that even when the facility is at your hand, you're holding on to it. Trust me, there are other bodies holding on to the growth of that money that can pull it down in one day and it is done. I've had instances of entrepreneurs who get this money, sir. Build poultry, who get this, 
build poetry. After building poetry, a land that was given to you and you're building poetry, you've started your business and you were told one day that they sold to someone. It's not the only poetry there. This, I'm, not, I'm not into poetry farming. I'm just giving you an entrepreneur's experience. She, she, they have to start from scratch after demolition and all. I've had instances with people who, who has gotten this money and something happened. The, the whole pack, um, package of insurance f packaging, isn't this full compressive one that when you have fire incidents, they want to come and cover up for you? We had fire incident, but to God be the glory, we picked up our pieces we had, and we immediately started production because it actually got a whole lot of some of our equipment. But we thank God, we picked our pieces and we're trying to bounce back, which we have. I'm just saying this, that sir, please, when we want to have, when you want to have, I don't want to say we, <laughs> when you want to have the past tree, you need other bodies that could make this money payment easy for entrepreneurs. Because the truth is not giving them the money. There's an enabling environment for entrepreneurs to be able to do this business. Take it or leave it. We are the future of Nigeria. And I tell you, with the incoming after, if you allow entrepreneurs to be able to do business well, Nigeria is going to be the China of today, even greater, because we have everything that it takes to make it great. But we... We've made a note of this. Thank you. Thank you. Just, uh, just, just before um, the MD of Nassau uh, comments on that, I'd like to go to... Uh, uh, Muhammad Ali Baba here, we, who, who you know provides um, uh, development advice uh, to, to to certain entrepreneurs. Uh, you heard the issues that Abimbala has raised here about the finance, the money not just being all ab about it. There's also the question of regulatory authorities and certain other processes which can all combine to you know almost make nonsense of whatever access to finance that you have. What, 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 what do you have to say about this? With her completely. And that's why this concept of ease of doing business needs to be taken more seriously. Like I said earlier, it appears most of these policies are initiated by the federal government and the, those, the, the, those on the I mean, states and local governments that actually need to not only initiate but to seize and run with it are usually part of the challenge. Because, I mean, this is of doing business, particularly you have, usually we have some states that have one-stop shop where some of these per permits, you know, all the regulatory authorities could even be within the same building whereby you move from one desk to the other and then uh, you, you easily are able to access some of these permits or approvers, uh, you know, in a day or in a few, in a, in a few days or weeks. I think that's part of what needs to be emphasized. States needs to actually get more seriously involved in a lot of these uh, activities. And then, of course, you also have the issue of multiple taxation or you have even uh, this, you know, intense uh, drive for revenue generation. There are also mostly problems to, 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 some of the, to a lot of these uh, SMEs. So I think there is need to, I don't know, I mean, they have... Uh, you know, is in the commercial. There, there, there's actually need the same way they have these uh, regular meetings of uh, commissioners of finance, maybe at FAC. I think a lot of the relevant uh, MDS do need to have a national uh, platform whereby they will compare notes and then they will be able to, uh, you know, ensure synergy. You know, and then particularly this concept of ease of doing business. States and local government need to take them more seriously because uh, by and large, these businesses are located within their, 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 their constituencies. So I think they need to, to actually take it more seriously. And then, right. of course, Thank even the federal government, this, uh, there's usually this clinic they usually hold, okay. whereby a lot of this... Uh, Fine. Thank you very much. Okay. Are in one room. Usually, after that ceremony, not much seems to happen. So okay. I think the presidency, that is the, I think that is of doing business, uh, you know, uh, committee or whatever under the vice president needs to take them more seriously. That needs to okay. be follow up. I, I, at this the, point, we'll, we'll go to the phone lines. And uh, our very first caller, I believe, is still there. Chidi from Port Harcourt. Chidi, go right ahead. Okay. Good evening, gentlemen. And good evening, Nigeria. Hello, Chidi. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Good evening, gentlemen, and good evening, Nigeria. Okay, um, my question is that I want to know um, the requirements
requirement for assessing the loan. And uh, if there's any portal that is, is supposed to be made available for those that need to apply. And uh, also, um, if there's any training, the place of the training and the requirements for the training, that that would be good. And uh, sorry, Chidi, could you, could you repeat the question? Be a good could pro, uh, advertisement for it at the local levels, because it is as if that only the existing business owners are in the know of the program. Uh, if taken back to the secondary school, you know, to create an awareness, it will shift a, 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 a lot of uh, mind towards entrepreneurship and business ownership before they leave the post-secondary school. Okay. All right. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think perhaps you I got it. You are you referring to the mm -hmm. Agric uh, business, uh, Agnes business, which uh, is intended to give uh, SME affordable loans. Essentially, the requirement is first of all, you have to apply via a portal. After the application, you need to also select an EDI, Entrepreneur Development Center. Uh, it's organized as one of them. Uh, you do a training for five working days. After the five working days, uh, then you also, the organization can help you develop business plan. That is the EDI. Then it comes, the application comes to us. You are also supposed to do interview. Initially, the interview was physical, but now turned to questionnaire. So the questionnaire is supposed to test your business experience. And all issues are around risk management. Like the last woman speaker talked about risk issues in business. Yes. Part of what the EDI is supposed to do is to teach you about risk management. So that because you are going to a business, not everybody can do business, let, it, let the truth be told. Some people are may not that be smart to do business. So you have to know your areas of strength, areas of weakness. So the questionnaire is to be able to know those who can screen out and decline. DDI too are supposed to train you to be able to have entrepreneurial skills so that whatever is the environment, because there is no business that doesn't have risk. Yes, you think Nigeria has peculiarities around ease of doing business, around uh, power, around insecurity, but each country has its own peculiarity. In spite of all the challenges, some people are still doing successful and they are making money. So all you need to do is identify the risks and mitigate those risks. So those training is supposed to give you or upgrade your skills around management of business. And that is why you find that some people were rejected during the ED, uh, admin's uh, evaluation. Because if you feel that you don't have the skills, the know-how to do business, why should I give you 10 million? Don't currently reduce to 3 million to allow a greater number of people to have access. So, the idea is to upscale your skills so that you can do business in, irrespective of the environment in which we are. Environment may not be friendly, yes, but some people still do successful business because they know the know-how. Okay, let, yeah. let's get this other call from Aliu. He's calling in from Abuja. Aliu, hello. Hello, good evening, sir. Hello. Yes, go ahead, Aliu. Yes, I, my question goes to the uh, MD myself. Uh, please, I, 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 will, I, will, I want to know, know how, when quickly the second batch will, will, will start benefiting. Second batch of what? Of the of the loan. Which of the loans? Is it admin, TCF? Uh, we have several the, products. Uh, household. Household? Yes. Yeah, it's ongoing. Um, it's not a one-stop, uh, one-off event. It's ongoing. It's, it's uh, as it comes with this boss but if you if you have started this uh, session from beginning if you listen to me yes. i told you we have over nine million application for covid household yes. both covid uh, household and sme so in that way it means we have to screen out our resources are not are limited the resources cannot match the demand so all i can say be okay. patient and um, i've always said it's not a must that you must get your source of funding for nmb because yes. If I look at 9 million Nigerians, and that today, so we are closed the portal. As I match, the clo uh, portal is closed. We say, okay, let's clear the backlog so that people don't have, uh, people don't lose confidence in the scheme. Because the more people apply and they are not getting, the confidence will go down. So we now say, let's clear yeah. this backlog. But again, the source to clear the backlog uh, is also challenging okay. because it's coming from the central bank. And central bank to a large extent have tried. 
So, and that is why you find out that the funds was reduced from, it used to be 2.5 million for SME. Now it got back to 750. The ideas allow a greater number of people to get. So, what I would just urge you, be patient. I hope you get it. The numbers are overwhelming and the resources are limited. Um, about how long do you think it's going to take before you clear the backlog and reopen the portal? Because there are so many who would be waiting for that. <laughs> I'm not sure we're going to reopen the portal now mm -hmm. with uh, over 8 million people already in the portal. Yeah. Because I will reduce 1 million because we are done about 1 million. So okay. everybody will have about 8 million. So that funding might not be there because Central by itself has uh, expanded a lot of resources to cover this. Uh, under the federal government uh, support. So, what I will urge you, well, if you are able to get, fine. If not, begin to think of alternative sources of funding. Because it's not everybody that apply for them that must get. Let's get it right. It's not possible. Some people even on the application, they have wrong BVN. Some people have credit failure. Some people, based on what we have seen on records, they are not qualified to get that loan because they don't have any reasonable source of uh, business. Or they are, they, based on the statistic of valuation, they are failed evaluation. So there are many reasons. But what we are trying to do is provide feedback. Hmm. But I will say, look, oh, for so so reason, your loan is rejected for the uh, TCA. But for the admins, those who are following know that we are providing feedback for a lot of applicants that their loan has been rejected because they have failed risk evaluation criteria. Okay. So there will be feedback in the future to say your loan is accepted or successful or your loan is rejected for social stories. All right. Let's get back to the phones uh, now. And we have uh, Buba Umar calling in from Kaduna. Hello. Buba, are you there? I'm there, sir. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, first of all, students, you have to be listen free to us. You would have involved a person like me who have not gotten this, having tried, have not gotten to be part of your panel. Now, uh, the challenges of this thing is far fetched from what you people are discussing there. Now, if you look at what the uh, Nathan Taylor is saying, there has to be a range of years that will enable you to be satisfied to gain this loan. I'm talking of admin. These are talking the talk, not working the work. A loan in every country, every indigenous of this country, the level of indebtedness will warrant you to be lower to the country. We applied this admin since 2018, and, and I have been a farmer for quite some time. And I've been a farmer, I have converted to cash crop farmer. And in fact, I'm a benefit and sunflower farmer. And I have market in China. Now, this thing, if you look at what is the challenges I'm facing now, Chinese people are even coming to our country now to hire the lands that we have to farm this kind of product that I do. So what I want the nursal, what I want the nursal to do, you would have taken us for interview phase to know who are these things, not actually listening and saying uh, we will offload it later. So this thing, and uh, if you look at the Senedan and this thing, you have to be a, con a computer guru before you be eligible to all this thing. A computer is not a failure like all of us. Whenever you apply the time and this thing of soliciting is there. So what we were seeing as a challenge to me, you have to work out your ways before getting this loan. Because we have, as, as, as I know I have applied it, I know the challenge I'm encountering now. And I have to go and find out what are the challenges. So there are some other kickbacks at that, at that, at that place. So there is, so if you look at labor state and others, go there and see. They will I tell you, is there any free money? You, there have to be a kickback. So clear all these things first. 
Why is it that I apply since 2018, Agnes, and I've got all my details on this number that I'm calling you? <laughs> Clear this is. Call people for interview first. Then you grab you select. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Buba. All we can do is once yeah. again ask the <laughs> MD of uh, National Microfinance Bank yeah, thank to you state for, it again. <laughs> thank you for the feedback. Um, <laughs> it's not surprising by your frustration, but if you follow our session right from the beginning, you obviously you'll have known the reasons. As I've said, we have a lot of backlog, and that is attributed to the fact that uh, we have funding challenges. Resources cannot match the demand. So what we have done is to upscale our evaluation criteria. And I will be surprised that if you have not received a declare message, because if you apply since 2018, environment about three years ago, it then means your business plan is no longer relevant because inflation has come in. So what we do is to evaluate all those that have applied two, three years ago and send the SMA, SMS to reject their loss. And I said to go and reapply. Again, because for instance, the threshold has even changed. In 2018, it's 10 million. I did your business plan based on 10 million. In 2021, due to funding limitations or limited access, I want a greater number of people to have access. We now reduce to 3 million. So we now say, okay, go back, redo your business plan, and we'll send SMS, we'll, they'll be there with the code so that you re enter our application and reapply. Because if you give you 3 million, and you apply for 10 million, it then means that loan cannot fulfill your business plan. And eventually, it means that that loan will go back. You default. Because somebody is looking for 10 million to do business, you give it 3 million. You are simply saying you shouldn't pay back because that loan cannot match initial concept of business. So, what our advice is that uh, if I have your detail, I will let you know certainly your loan will have been declined because we don't allow loan to stay for two years without feedback. Uh -huh. So the idea is to go and reapply, we join the queue, we hope that you get, but be mindful, I have always said, the problem in Nigeria is there is air of entitlement around these loans. And anywhere they say, it's not a grant. I you give grant, there are pre-qualifications that, there are, there are pre that will be defined. We have defined a pre-qualification. Part of it is that you must even pass an interview. An interview that used to be physical before is electronic now. So it's in form of questionnaire. So once you fill that questionnaire, you already decline. Once you put in your BVN, and, but it's a straight through check, and your BVN is wrong, they will decline you. Once your business plan didn't meet a requirement, they will decline you. Once the questionnaire you are saying, maybe they say they are looking for someone who has business experience of one year or six months, and you are looking for three million, questionnaire can also decline you. But if you are looking for one million, you are starting business, Questionnaire will pass you even if you didn't do it because we felt that it's better you start a small amount and then graduate. So it's not because you are you apply automatically you are qualified. This is a loan. There are criteria for evaluation. So, but what I urge Nigerians is that they should be patient. Uh, everybody knows that uh, there have been resources shortfall recently due to the impact of COVID. The budget is affected. The, the federal government agencies are also trying, like CBN. Uh, even the arguments, it's actually an initiative of Bankers Committee. It's a private sector fund. Bankers Committee come together under the chairmanship of Central Bank Governor and said, look, we need to do some social responsibility. They now set aside 5% of their profit after tax towards this argument scheme. And after the COVID, the impact on their profit, profitability, also declined significantly. So what we had last year, and what we had this year, it dropped by over 70%. So you can see the financing gap under the agnes. Right. Who's gonna provide the gap? And that's why we talk about state governors also coming in, or state government coming in, local government coming in, NGO coming in, international organization coming in to provide uh, access to funding for the okay. uh, SME. Okay, more calls yeah. coming through now. Ismaila from Abuja. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. And good evening, the panel. Hello. Yes, go yeah, ahead, Ismaila. Yeah. My name is Ismaila. 
I'm just trying to contribute my own quarter to the program. What we are saying today, everybody, the, the pressure is being laid on the federal government, federal government. The state I come from today, my state government, no local government in on those states that has a tractor. We only have the tractor from the private owner. No tractors, no local government in Ondo State that has a tractor where a farmer can hire to cultivate a farm. Everybody will talk about federal, 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 federal. <laughs> Nisa, 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 Nisa. Today, if I want to cut, if I want to plow a land in Ondo State in my local government, it will cost me thirty thousand naira. It will take me a month to get somebody to come and plow it for me. It will take me another 17 days to get another person to come and read. Those are the problems. Federal government alone cannot get this thing done. NISA alone cannot get this thing done. What is our state government doing? We can't go. We, I think I, I'm a farmer today. For me to assess a tractor, you have to go through the private. You can't get it through the government. The loan they are talking about, the loan is not made for the farmer. It's made for the people with the color eye. The farmers cannot assess those loans. They let the governors get us the tractor. We will make headway. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And uh, taking up from uh, what... Uh Smile, I just said, DJ ND, well, <laughs> the MD of Nassau Microfinance Bank has been uh, on the hot seat so far, understandably so. Yeah, um, <laughs> right. Yeah. So. No. <laughs> but I like the last speaker, his comments, and uh, people should take it in their feet. Yeah. I think you it's can. also on yeah. the side of saying that yeah. uh, federal government alone cannot do yeah. it. Yeah. And so he's making an appeal yeah. to state governments and yeah. local governments to, to also yeah. come in. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the NDE used to have what we call a tractor hiring mm. unit. Mm. Mm. Uh, that was a scheme in which we offer these services mm. to unemployed Nigerians and to farmers alike at very, very moderate rates for them to, to, to go and cultivate land and then do whatever they want to do. However, because of, again, financial constraints, that now went low. Mm, that went low. I just want to uh, also speak on what uh, this other guest said, you know, about taxes, about risk, right. about this, about that. Regulatory authorities. That's all about business. Business is all about risk taking. If you do not, then you cannot do any business. And yes, it's true, there are so many taxes and charges. And these are normally built into a good feasibility report. This is built in there and being taken care of. Nonetheless, we also advise that people with like businesses like that should form themselves into cooperatives and then approach this, uh, uh, this tax uh, generating organizations and then make a case for their members and it will be harder. This is what we, we, we often advise. Now how do you respond to Ooh, our suggestions that um, there's also need for uh, a meeting of some sort to take place, not just uh, uh, with the uh, financier alone, but with some of all these uh, other bodies, uh, especially when uh, the activities are going to impact on the payment, the repayment of those loans and other issues. And uh, for the MD of National Microfinance Bank, we also had Abimola talk about uh, some more flexibility in, 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 in repayment. As far as I'm concerned, the ability has been building uh, enough. Because if you look at the loans, it's cheap. 
at 5% during COVID, 9% after COVID. By, by 2022, March, it will be 9%. Currently, it's 5%. Accessibility is very flexible. No collateral, no guarantor, no cash flow projection from your bank to know your capacity to pay. So, and the loan is also have two years monitoring. So, two years means you are not going to pay, but the two years will expire by March 2022. Beyond the two years, it also have three years to seven years before you can pay. You can't get this type of loan anywhere. And that's why we talk, uh, my colleague here talked about risk management. That's what we should be looking at. There is no business that doesn't have risk. There's nothing that you do in life that doesn't have risk. So you need to have sound knowledge of what you want to do and be able to mitigate whatever risk that will come from double taxation, unfriendly environment, power shortages, insecurity, all other challenges that will make your business fair. You have to identify it and mitigate uh, those challenges. That's my view. Because if you say you cannot do business because there are, are, are risks, you can't, you can't do business. And that's why I said we collaborate with this agency for entrepreneurial development skills and several other uh, entrepreneurial development institutes to promote their skills around how to manage their business. Because business itself is risk. And those who know how to manage those things are the most successful people in business. One other issue we would bring out here is to find out what has been the repayment rate so far for those who have accessed these loans. What? The repayment uh, rate for, for instance, if you take the target credit facility because it's still under monitorium, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk about repayment because they have two years which will expire, as I've said, by March 2021. Mm -hmm. But I will urge the agents to please pay back these loans because it's like a revolving loan. If you take the loan, you don't pay. Your sister, your brother, your whoever, your uncle, your relation, your friend cannot be able to take. And beyond that, we are going to activate what they call global standing instruction on your account. Irrespective of how you have your money, we will debit that account and credit back NMB as a repayment. And beyond that too, you will trigger CRMS on your account to the extent that you cannot get loan in the banking industry. And we are also taking of publishing your name in the newspaper that you default. It's a reputational issue. So if you are a business person and you cannot get loan, I mean, that's, you are not truly doing business. Every, people who made money all over the world took other people's money by way of loan. So they must be pay back so that other people can. It's a revolving loan. People should not take it as a grant because that's, that's one perception. It's not a grant. It's not a grant. Okay, let's go over to uh, yeah. Mohammed Alibaba. And uh, you've listened to the call so far, uh, the, the, you know, the challenges people have talked about and the issues they have raised. And uh, now we want to get your perspective on uh, some of these issues. I think that's one of the things that we need to focus on. We need to, in, fact, in, in the case of uh, our Koboroa program, we're even thinking of involving not just the traditional institutions, even religious authorities. People need to be sensitized to appreciate the fact that under every creed, once you have taken a solemn uh, you know, promise, you need to keep to it. So because it's a major challenge that people have this perception that it's a national cake, this is my share, and then I don't need to return it. But just like the MD has emphasized, even, I mean, the mere fact that you are actually doing that business and you, 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 your, your credit rating is poor, it means you, even if you don't repay this one, you will never get another loan ad again. And of course, uh, even the facilities that you already have, particularly the equipments, you, they, they can only revert to your ownership after you have repaid. So the bank can also trigger uh, repossession, and that's why we have the, the, the what do you call it, movable collateral uh, registry where you're supposed to have registered that. So people, part of what we actually need to do is strong advocacy for people to appreciate that they need to repay this facility. So for them, even in their enlightened self-interest, for them to remain in business. And then of course for it to be revolving enough you know, for others like that, that are on queue to, to benefit from it. And then of course, most importantly, we also need to reiterate the need for state governments and local governments and other authorities to, to, to key into it and support these uh, uh, activities. 
One other major, I mean, one other source of repayment that we need to emphasize is uh, particularly when it comes to farmers. Before any farmer accesses this, there is what is called equity contribution. In addition to equity contribution, we need to encourage savings. That is one culture that is missing in small businesses. That by and large, they, everyone claims it doesn't have enough. But it's a matter of discipline. Part of what we need to encourage and part of the advocacy is for both farmers and small businesses to also uh, deliberately dedicate certain sums to, to, to savings. And because savings accrues is one of the means of, uh, you know, uh, what you call capital uh, accumulation. And some of these savings could actually form the basis of encouraging other commercial banks that are now reluctant to, 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 to support small businesses to look your way because there is the, the provision for equity contribution or matching, matching fund. Usually, because you may not have uh, you know, bankable collateral, cash is one of the most, is the most acceptable forms of collateral. So if you are able to maybe raise up to 25% of your requirements, some of these other commercial banks can look your way and be able to grant you credit because by then you will have established a track record that will make you attractive. So with cash savings, you could also attract additional funding rather than going to join this uh, long queue that where millions are already waiting. So these are some of the things that were strong advocacy is actually required, and that will be in partnership with uh, relevant uh, authorities in the states and the local governments. And of course, even NGOs and other well-meaning foundations can join, but we need really to reorientate our people to appreciate the value in repaying their loans as at when due because that's how they will build business credibility. Right, since, since, since you just talked about, you just touched a little bit of, on uh, something about the Anchor Borrowers Program, and uh, since you're here, and you're uh, special assistant to uh, the president of the Rice Farmers Association, you'd be in a position to tell us at this point um, how rice farmers have been able to access funds and, of course, comment on one other issue that we've heard all the time, and that's about uh, some not-so-true farmers who have ways of uh, getting their hands into some of the schemes without actually being real. One of the ways we're actually addressing that, you know, because it was a new program, this uh, perception about being the national cake was part of it. But increasingly, the pro process is being refined. One of the ways we're addressing that is actually to involve uh, the traditional rulers from the lowest level, from ward heads to village heads to district heads. And we, because, I mean, in, under those small cluster, we're also engaged in cluster farming, whereby you know, neighbor, neighbor farmers, they know each other. The village head knows who is who. They know, uh, I mean, credible persons. They know the actually genuine farmers and even those that weren't given the could, could pay back. So that, adopting that approach has been very helpful lately. So we have improved uh, repayment ability because the most critical part is that, uh, you know, farmer selection process, the credibility in the farmer selection process. You know, initially when the system started, a lot of people jumped in, they became officials, and they ended up looking for opportunities to actually line their pockets. And then you have you know, the wrong farmers being selected. But with this approach now, where you go down to the very grassroots and in employing the authorities, uh, I mean, the local uh, traditional authorities, they, the system has been improving. So once you get the farmer selection right, other things will follow. And then with, like I said, cluster farming, whereby, uh, you know, you have uh, a group of 10, 20, I mean, 10, 20, or even 100 farmers headed by lead farmers from among themselves. There is that uh, peer pressure, uh, peer influence to ensure that now we know you are a farmer, you have actually farmed. And then, of course, we, we ensure that through those leaders, because they also commit, we get those leaders, even including the villages and whatever, to sign indemnity forms, to sign things like guarantee forms, whereby any farmer that doesn't pay will revert to you. So for ab initio, you won't bring any farmer that will not repay. So your credibility actually has been a, a great asset for for you to benefit from this. Let's take it like to I said, the... Going forward, we also <laughs> want to employ those, uh, try, I mean, even religious authorities. They preach in the mosque and the churches. You know, in, in Islam particularly, it's said that if you are owing, where well, you know when somebody dies, he's not buried until whatever he's owing is repaired by his relations. So we need to go back to those basics to sensitize people to be alive to their both uh, solemn 
and uh, you know civic and religious responsibilities to to repay this loan and uh, that that has, like i say has been helping lately let, let's, let's take let's it take to it. the president of the All Farmers Association, now, not, not just rice farmers now, the, the president. Kabir, uh, uh, credibility among farmers? Well, uh, I told you, <coughs> you, you must first identify the farmers. Uh, and you, you cannot just sit in your office to identify them. Uh, you must reach out to organized bodies that register farmers using certain parameters. The Rice Farmers Association, as a special assistant to the president said now, had suffered immense scrutiny and disappointment from people who borrowed to produce rice but uh, ended up doing something else. There's a big scandal in Kano where 10 billion was even lost. Some people were giving out uh, names, fictitious names of 1,000 farmers, 2,000 farmers, and taking all the money and input and whatever, and selling the input, and it is very well known. Now, if you are going to learn to do it correctly by losing so much money, then I think it's, uh, it's better not started. If you look at the quantum of money that has been put through the Anko Borowa program on rice, you know, when we first uh, escorted the Mr. President to uh, Kebi State to launch it, it began with 2.6 billion. But before you know what is happening, it's in hundreds of billions now, and the money a large chunk of it is not back there. And then, as I said earlier, and uh, as the MD of Nassau, uh, uh, Michael Farrell said, you need to pay back for others to get because it is not possible for government to, to give out all the money that is required to reach all the farmers. So we, we must do due diligence in uh, giving out loans. If you are, I mean, sure that you want to do this program sustainably. But if it's a one-off, uh, if people think that is a national cake, then by all means do it the way it is being done now. We told the CBN, we, we were recently in, uh, in Uyo, and we told them that uh, they, they need to think again about how to do Anko Broa. I'm not. It's not only rice, there is uh, maize, there are many other things that uh, they are doing Anko Broa program on. And none of them really, none of them really is successful in the true sense of it. And it's all because the wrong people are being given. You know, when, when people come to us, to Afan, and they say that we, we hear that you give out loans, we tell them outright that Afan doesn't give loans. <laughs> we don't give loans. So, no, but no, you know, most people come to agriculture because they think that there is money there. Okay. And I'm sorry that uh, most of us think that... Uh, it's, it's national cake. Okay. It's their share of the national All cake right. that they are getting. So, All right, so uh, Afan uh, President. Uh, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, return to, uh, let's return to one person who has not taken a loan and seen it as uh, a national cake, but has put it into productive use. And that's talking about Abimbala, uh, the CEO of uh, uh, BIMCAF. As we prepare to wind down, you have passed through this and uh, we have discussed some of the challenges here and uh, how the schemes, the various schemes can be made better. As we wind down, what would you say to people who are out there who still can't get through or those who have uh, been successful like you and uh, again uh, to wrap up with the attitude of Nigerians on a general note, where people like you start up a business and um, uh, a lot of uh, the, the Nigerians don't want to patronize mid or processed in Nigeria goods. This opportunity once again. First of all, let me tell you, I'm one of those people that don't believe it's a national cake. It's not a national cake, I must confess to you. It's a loan that must be repaid. Let me first of all chip in this to the direct, um, director of NISAL. 
that I am a beneficiary of both COVID-19 and AgMIF's loan, but I heard where you said it is two years moratorium. No, it's six months. I was got, I got six months. And I think it's only COVID that was one year for us, but it's still fine, fair, because it's still better than commercial bank. But I must confess to you, sir, that people should not take it as national cake. Repayment is key so other people can get. When I talked about the risk of getting this money and doing business, there is nothing you do, even to sleep at night and wake up in the money is a risk. You take it by closing your eyes and making sure your God wakes you up successfully in the morning. So everything in life is risk. So we are all in it together, hoping that we get better. And I must confess to you, it's really eating up so much into our economy if Nigeria, if Nigerian government is not encouraging entrepreneurs. And why do I say this? Encouraging so much importation into our country to compete with our made in Nigerian goods. We definitely slow down our sales. No matter how much you do good packaging, you make so much effort. Some people just because it is made in Nigeria, they don't want to buy. But I will encourage Nigerians, we are trying. Most entrepreneurs are putting in their best to give quality, chemical-free product for people to consume. We try all it takes. I'm an advocate for people to go into the production of onions. I love when people tell me they want to start business. I give them the idea of doing dry tomatoes. I tell them how to do garlic because these are things that are suffering that farmers we make so little money on so much waste in agriculture sec agricultural sector, all because of processing. And this is where the money is for this country. Take it or leave it. The future of our nation lies in agriculture and lies in making it from, from the farm to processing, not exporting semi-finished food. I'm talking about finished goods, something proud you could proudly say made in Nigeria. Yes. I understand it's not easy because it's not about processing, it involves packaging and all. But our entrepreneurs are putting in their best to make sure they give food quality. If our government can reduce the intake of this imported um, food into our country, it will grow our economy. We looked within. During COVID-19, most stores looked within. Even the big men, the people who want to eat imported food, looked inward because it was not coming in. So if, you, if we could survive and grow our economy and people, people like me made sales during COVID-19 because I used to tell people it came in as an opportunity for our brand and people looked inward, patronized made in Nigerian brand. I don't know how the government will do it, but they need to reduce importation so it can actually grow the, the, entrep the entrepreneurial group. We are all in different sectors, entrepreneur. We have different sectors. I'm not talking about food. I'm even talking even to clothing. Today, I'm all dressed up in almost made in Nigeria. And it's so affordable. Everything I'm wearing, this was made by a small girl of maybe 14 years. And a, a young guy on the street, I get my cap on. And the moment I saw him, I asked him, if you know you do this yourself, I can introduce you to people who do it. And that's how it keep going. We look inward. People make so much money from these little things and you don't know. And it helps us to grow our economy. I will for one tell MD Nysel Microfinance and MD that you are doing a wonderful job for entrepreneurs. And I'm must commend but you need these funds and I am pleading to all state governments that can afford to support NISAL please come up to, to help us grow this nation we don't want this money when we are on queue during election we want it now to grow our economy that's the truth. We want it now. We want it to be a we want Nigerians to be able to be governable by every by uh, Abimbola Kafilat Ayeni, CEO of uh, Bimkaf Palace Nigeria Limited. We thank you so much for being on this program and sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, we might as well just add to your name and title as uh, an advocate for Made in Nigeria. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, DG NDE, let's hear your closing uh, comments as we yeah, wind down. Mm. that, uh, mm. my colleague from Rice Farmers Association mentioned uh, cluster farming. Mm -hmm. The NDE, I remember, has, has an experience in that. We call it block farming. Mm. And it's been very effective. Mm -hmm. 
we put people together, we acquire a parcel of land, and then divide it, and then give them inputs, mm. and ask them to till the land and mm. cultivate it. Mm. And that we have found very, very effective. Uh, in order to cap the entire thing, Lunis must have a sincerity of purpose. It is true, out of experience, most people, young and old, even the unemployed, including farmers, believe that loans, loan facilities are a national cake. Some get it to immediately go and solve existing problems. And how do you recover? You cannot. So the appeal is people should use the such funds judiciously and then repay for others to be able to access. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Director General of uh, the National Directorate of Employment, and the Abu Bakar Nuhu FIPU. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And, uh, well, it's back to you now, uh, MD of uh, National Microfinance Bank. As we wind down, um, well, a lot of Nigerians will still say, <laughs> we will still look out. <laughs> like this is too. Even though the yeah. portal has been closed. <laughs> but I, I do assure you, we are optimistic people. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, let me start firstly from the President Rice uh, Association uh, on the issue of farmers, smallholder farmers. But the central bank is also coming out with a mapping formula now to ensure credibility of farmers, mm -hmm. because that is the key weakness in the value chain. Once you have credibility of farmers, you have validated the farmers, you have validated the farmland, and the ANCO is also validated. I think everything will go smoothly. But my closing remark is this. Um, NASA cannot close the SME financing gap alone. We have repeated this. Most speakers have also talked about it. But for emphasis, uh, the Nigerian SME community uh, need to recognize that other players have to also come in to fill the gap. And here that's why we mention issues around the state governments, the local government, the NGOs, even international bodies should come in. Federal government has done enough. Both the federal government side and agencies under the federal like CBN, they have been a major player. In fact, Central Bank has taken its development function to the highest peak to almost equal monetary policy to the extent that uh, they have done enough in its own balance sheet. Its balance sheet has expanded just to allow the economy to grow and develop. So other complementary effort has to come from other agencies, both private and public sector, to complement the effort of the federal government. That's right. So thank you very much, uh, Abu Bakr Abdullahi Kure, Managing Director, CEO, Nassau Microfinance Bank. We appreciate your coming on tonight. Thank you. And uh, well, this is where we must uh, leave this conversation. I'm sure it will go on uh, at different levels, um, even with the public. Uh, but we just uh, want to thank all those who have been part of this discussion uh, and uh, for those who called in, asked questions, and for those who also shared their experiences, we thank you all. But we have to leave it here for now. Also, thanks to uh, the National President All Farmers Association, uh, Kabir Ibrahim, who joined us via Zoom from Katsina. Thanks for staying up this late with us, and uh, we appreciate you uh, all, all, always uh, responding to our calls. Thank you, Kabir. And uh, thank you also to uh, Muhammad Ali Baba, uh, Financial Inclusion Facilitators. Uh, he's uh, the CEO of Amfani Development Consultant Agri Business. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us here. Thank you very much. And uh, also uh, thanks to all those who have been part of this program. Next week, we'll be back with uh, NJ Tuesday Live. I'm Cyril Stover. Continue to stay safe. Thank you.